Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we're going to take a look at the 9mm versions of the Calico Light Weapons System. We have a carbine and a pistol here to check out today, and they are mechanically identical. Uh, it is just there are a couple different form factors on the same base system. So that system was put together by two guys named Michael Miller and Warren Stockton in the mid-1980s, came onto the market commercially just a few years after that. And what they have is a combination of actually a roller delayed blowback locking system, well not quite locking system, uh, and a very interesting and rather creative and innovative helical magazine design. So really the heart of the Calico system is the magazine technology, the magazine design, the magazine patents. Uh, the 22 and 9mm magazines work a little bit differently, but we'll pull apart one of the 9mm ones here today to show you. And what you get essentially is in this relatively compact magazine, a hundred rounds. And then there's the shorter version that holds 50. Um, and unlike any other magazine system that can hold a hundred rounds, this one actually fits fairly nicely on the gun. Uh, I would say the other relatively common firearm out there that uses this sort of form factor is the FNP90, although it does not use a helical system. Uh, the Calico was not the first helical magazine ever to be developed or produced. Uh, we can actually see a helical magazine in the Evans rifle way back in the 1880s. And I have a video on the Evans if you're interested, definitely check that one out. I'll link to it at the end of this video. But uh, what Calico had in mind was basically a submachine gun that had a massive ammunition capacity advantage over everything else in its field. And they weren't wrong. Now the problem was there were a few practical issues that got in the way, and then there was a huge legal issue that got in the way. So let's start by taking a closer look at this. I'll pull it apart. There's a lot of clever elements that went into this mechanically. It just all kind of came down to, does it work? As I said at the beginning, the mechanical core of the Calico is identical between the rifles and the pistols. So we're going to start by taking a look at the pistol because it's just a lot more compact and easier to work with and show you. So first bit of unusualness with the Calico is that the front sight is located out here on this tower that is an integral part of the gun. If I squeeze these two mag catches right there, I can pop this magazine off. So there's your front sight, windage and elevation adjustable. The rear sight, however, is actually located on the magazine. You have the option of either an aperture or notch. There's the notch. But what this means is that every magazine has its own rear sight. Now this, the Calico was never really marketed as a precision target sort of thing. Uh, so I'm actually kind of curious as to exactly how much wobble or how much play there is uh, between different magazines. But you do certainly have the potential of, well, kind of like interchangeable machine gun barrels where the rear, like where the front sight's mounted on the barrel and the rear sight on the gun. Every time you change mags, you might change your zero. By the, way, by the way, the 50 round and 100 round magazines both fit on all of the different guns, uh, making this a particularly bulky thing here, but it does work. The muzzle brake on the end was an optional accessory. Uh, the barrels are not threaded, they just have a little uh, pin divot cut in them so that you can press this on and pin it in place. Uh, neat idea, as you'll see in just a moment, it does prevent you from taking off the forend or the charging handle. So uh, basic controls of the Calico. We should go over those. We have a charging handle on the left side. It is non-reciprocating, and in fact its return spring is up here uh, under the handguard. We then have a safety. Pull this all the way back to cock it. Uh, you can see that pin sticking out there. That is the ejector. Obviously this feeds from the top. It ejects out the bottom. That what looks like a magazine well here is actually the ejection port. And then we have a two position, or three position if you had one of the law enforcement full auto ones, uh, safety. The safety is also ambidextrous. Kind of cool actually that the Calico is a 
almost totally ambidextrous gun. Uh, the safety, the ejection um, are both ambi, the charging handles not, of course. And there is a bolt hold open. Um, there's not an automatic bolt hold open, but there is a manual one. And interestingly, if you push this in, we can let's see, pull the bolt back to there, and I can lock the bolt open halfway, uh, which is intended to be used to check to see if the thing's loaded. I can then also, if I hold the bolt uh, latch down, there we go, I can open the bolt all the way uh, and lock it in that position as well. And from either one you just push this lever in and it'll drop the bolt forward. You saw the magazine release a moment ago, they are just these two catches that lock into the, the mag, and then there is a notch here at the front that hooks into this recess in the magazine, like so, and that locks it in place. Now disassembly is done by a single pin, although you do have to dry fire it first to drop the striker. There we go. Then we just push this pin out. The charging handle is going to kind of hold it in there. There we go. Once this pin comes out, uh, you basically are able to separate three main components of the gun. You can pull the handguard off the front, although because this has a muzzle brake it won't come off unless I take the muzzle brake off, but that's okay, there's really nothing up there. Uh, you can then take the grip assembly and just slide it back off of the receiver. You have this. This gives us our safety, which simply lifts up that and locks the bolt in place. The trigger mechanism is at the rear, and when I pull the trigger it's just going to drop that hook. There is a semi-auto disconnector here, uh, so it'll only fire once. Moving to the receiver itself, we have uh, the actual bolt mechanism, which comes out as a single self-contained unit. Pop it back with the charging handle. There we go. So that comes out. That leaves us with just an empty shell of a receiver. The charging handle normally would come off the front. Uh, it sits right there. The action uses a roller delayed locking system, just like HK, um, taken from HK in fact. So uh, when this is all the way in battery, these two rollers push out into recesses in the receiver. And you can see those two recesses right here and here in the receiver. Um, there are these hexagonal bars that are used as the actual locking surfaces. Note that they are both pinned in place, so if anything goes wrong or if you need to change headspace, uh, you can take these out and replace them. I don't think anyone ever has in the history of Calico, but it would make sense as a manufacturing technique. When you fire and uh, pressure pushes back on this whole assembly, it is going to push backward against these two captive recoil springs. However, the two rollers have to push inward first, so the bolt head is going to stay in place and it is going to push the bolt body here backward. Once the rollers can go all the way in, then the whole thing can cycle backwards. Now we have an additional part here that you don't have on an HK system, and that is the actual striker. So there is a firing pin inside the bolt head here, and you can see it right there. There it is, it's sticking out a little bit now. When the striker goes forward it's going to hit the firing pin and push it out the bolt face to fire. So the bit that you saw in the trigger mechanism right here, that little hook is holding this back in this position. That, that little tongue on the front is there to keep everything lined up. It's got its own guide rod up here, and this top spring is the striker spring. So that goes forward and snap fires, and then the whole thing reciprocates against actually all three of the springs simultaneously. The guide rod here is kind of cool in that it is a single guide rod that comes up and uh, bends around the front, and they actually use that in the receiver. That guide rod loops around this lug and holds the whole fire, the whole bolt group, nicely in place.
Now the magazine. The magazine is really the heart of this system. So we've got a 50 rounder here, there are four viewing ports through, um, and there are numbers here at when this one's filled, when you can't see, when you can see a cartridge in it, the mag's full, and then you've got spots for 37, uh, 23, and 9, and that's just based on how many cartridges stack up in this thing uh, at the 12 o'clock top position. There is a winding spring and a handle at the back, and the deal with these is that they have a ratcheting sort of clutch mechanism inside. You've got a spring that you have to wind up uh, in order to tension the magazine to use it. Specifically for a 50 round magazine fully loaded it needs 10 revolutions of this winder. For a 100 round magazine it needs 23 revolutions. There's a button in the center that allows you to remove all the spring pressure. Plop! Like that. Um, that makes this actually a really easy magazine to load, because you can load it without needing the, without any spring tension being needed. And you can say load it halfway up, which will half wind, you know, it'll, it'll put a number of revolutions on the spring, and you can then use the clutch here to uh, remove the spring tension so that you can finish winding it. You can leave the magazines loaded without any spring tension on them. Like, this is all a pretty good system. So uh, the way that we disassemble this is also pretty easy. And you need to, most magazines, uh, you pull the floor plate, pull the follower out, and you can wipe them out if they get dirty inside. Well, as you might imagine, a helical spiral drum like this is going to be particularly susceptible to any dirt. So you need to be able to clean it out. To do that, you slide this top bar forward just enough that it will come off. It has a little interrupted set of dovetails up there. Put that aside, and then we can pop this open like so. I want to make sure that all the internal bits stay on one side. And then we have a second spring on the bottom. There we go. So this guy holds the bottom of the magazine together. This is the follower. And this is the central hub of the magazine, I suppose. And the follower is going to spin in this spiral track. Let's see if we can hold this all in place. There we go. The follower is going to spin around like that. Now what's interesting about this magazine is this is not just a single stack of cartridges. You might imagine this stacked up something like this, wound around this central coil. And while that's feasible, what Calico opted to do was actually increase the capacity beyond just that. So if I put the follower in place there, I've got one cartridge that's going to sit uh, right there in the central spindle. But then this is basically a double stack helical drum. So as you can see, every second round sits on the main spindle, and every other round sits moved, pushed out, away from it. So uh, you can't really see the inside of this because of course it'll all fall apart and I don't have a transparent one to show you, but there is, it. this is in fact a double stack helical magazine, which is really pretty cool. Just like a typical double stack single feed pistol magazine, uh, this does in fact come out as just a single feed uh, system. And what we have here is one fixed feed lip and then one metal that is spring loaded. And there's a little notch in the receiver right here on this side. So the bolt uh, will actually hit this as it comes forward, press this spring-loaded feed lip back up into the magazine, and allow a cartridge to drop out to be pushed forward uh, and chambered by the bolt. Note that I mentioned this earlier, but you can see the ejector sticking out there. That's going to punch the empty case off the bolt and out the bottom. Now that you've seen the pistol, we can take a quick look at the carbine. This one has been all Gucci'd out with all the optional add-on accessories, which is pretty cool. So uh, you can see that this, this system down here is the same mechanical core. It disassembles exactly the same way. The barrel is longer, 
still has a compensator on it, again an option, uh, has a vertical front grip added on as an option, it has a rail out here for mounting a laser uh, as an added option. Frankly I actually really like, at least in concept, having not shot this one yet, I like this optics mount idea. Uh, to me one of the, assuming the magazines work reliably, one of the big shortcomings of the Calico is this funky sighting system that uses the magazine as well as the gun. Being able to have a higher optic, uh, this by the way is a horrible, horrible cheesy airsoft or uh, air gun optic, but um, being able to use the magazine as a cheek weld, have a, a red dot style of optic up here, this is kind of the equivalent of an HK claw mount that is screwed into the frame of the gun, uh, so it is no longer dependent on the magazine. to be a part of the sighting system, and that's a good thing. Uh, the carbines, there we go, put that in its actual locking position, uh, were offered with a collapsing stock that you can extend out or compress. They also made a fixed stock version, uh, this is just the stock, but they made this version as well if you preferred that. The sling swivels are just very simple screw attachments that can be mounted on either side. There's the threaded hole for that there, and you could take this bolt out of the front and reverse it to put the front sling swivel on the other side, so maintaining the ambidextrous, uh, the ambidextrous options on the gun. And the original factory configurations allowed you to really just mix and match any of these features. Uh, fixed stock, folding stock, pistol only, barrel length, all those things, take your pick. Uh, and they had a designation for each of them. When the Calico guns originally came onto the market, specifically the 9mm ones, they were clearly trying to get a military or police contracts for them. Uh, they offered these guns in full auto form, as machine pistols, as full auto rifles, as a submachine gun, you know, with a stock and also a shorter barrel, uh, and their marketing was largely targeted towards that. Um, the problem was, well, historically they have a relatively poor reputation now for reliability, and I think there's a lot of complexity in those magazines that the engineering is cool, the design is cool, it's very creative, it's well thought out, but it still requires someone to manually wind the magazines and make sure that they've got, you know, if there's too much tension or too little tension you'll run into problems, and I think it was just fundamentally a little too complicated to really appeal to a military market, um, which left them with the commercial market. And unfortunately they brought these onto the market just shortly before the 1994 Omnibus Crime Bill, aka the Assault Weapons Ban, which prohibited in the United States manufacture of magazines that could hold more than 10 rounds. And if you're limited to 10 rounds, there's no reason to buy a Calico, and basically nobody did, and the company basically went into stasis for 10 years. Now it did come back uh, after the assault weapons ban, uh, which expired at sunset in uh, 2004. The company was actually sold in 2006, moved to Oregon, and it still appears to exist. They have a website, it's a terrible website, like it's an awful website, and they talk about, like they reference some interesting new products like the 22 versions in 17 HMR or 22 Magnum. They talk about a 45 ACP version, but nothing beyond just having a link to a broken web page. Um, I don't know if manufacturing is still going on or if they still have a stock of original production guns. These were renamed uh, the Liberty series, Liberty 1, 2, and 3 after the end of the assault weapons ban, so you'll find those out there. But they, it, it seems to me that the new Calico uh, company just doesn't have the capital to really do anything other than work with the existing stock that it appears to have been left over from manufacture before 1994. So uh, the reputation that these have online is rather poor, uh, with most people experiencing a substantial number of malfunctions with any given magazine. So. I'm very curious, as of this filming I have not actually had a chance to shoot these, so we're going to take them out to the range and see how this system actually works, if I can get it to run reliably. I'm wondering how much of those reliability issues are people not 
paying close attention to magazine maintenance and proper winding and loading of the magazines, and how much is in fact just, well, they didn't quite fine-tune it enough to get it working right. So we'll find out, uh, we're going to go ahead and do that tomorrow. So stick around, thanks for watching.